office. Literally looks like something from the 80s or something. With a view towards a wall and no windows can be opened in here. But at least I don't have to share it with anyone. So welcome to my Strasbourg office. I don't know if this was what you were sort of expecting, but nevertheless, this is what it looks like. So you might wonder why I am in Strasbourg right now. First of all, let me just tell you what it is that I work with. I'm an assistant for a member of the European Parliament, which means that I assist a member of the European Parliament in her daily work and also the legislative work. On average, once a month, I have to go to Strasbourg and it's a bit of a weird setup. It stems from a time where the European Parliament was much smaller than it is now, but it's still a rule that is present. It is written in the EU treaties. So once a month from Monday to Thursday, I find myself in Strasbourg in France. So I do not have a functioning shower, which is okay because I would never use it anyway. I don't even know why it's there, but I do have this printer which doesn't really seem to work like i don't know how i've like it's been here we have said many times this doesn't work and they keep claiming that it does work but it doesn't work so that's why i'm here and basically it's a whole separate building where i have my own office of course there is a space for a colleague but mostly i'm traveling alone it's also important to mention that it's actually not just the european parliament that comes here once a month uh, we also have representatives from the commission and from the, the european council there are ongoing negotiations on different directives and usually the parliament and the commission and council they negotiate together so they also come to Strasbourg. But of course it's not every single employee that is obliged to go to Strasbourg. The European Parliament members have to go and they usually bring some staff but they try to also reduce it as uh, towards a minimum. The reason why I'm here this week is because I have to negotiate some new resting time and driving times for bus drivers and this is why I have negotiations here in Strasbourg. But otherwise I would much rather stay home with my cats. Because this is a decision that is listed in the treaties, we can't just get rid of the practice. We have tried and it has not succeeded so far. I was actually not scheduled to go to Strasbourg, but because we have these negotiations and they're taking place in Strasbourg, I had to be here. The European Parliament has scheduled these two trains, two sets of trains, early in the Monday morning. And if you're not quick to get a ticket, you might be ending up on these jump seats that I had, or you might not even get a spot on the train and then you have to go with local trains, which takes a, a longer time. So I was very lucky that I at least got on the train and I could be there faster uh, because I have a lot of work to do today. So I've just printed out some voting lists for my MEP. She has to vote later later today. Usually they don't vote on Mondays, but she has a vote in her committee. And there are so many cases piling up that they had to have this extraordinary uh, meeting. So I've just printed out the voting list for her. I just have to speak to our intern now and I will see you later. <music> MVP has speaking time, but she has just texted me and said that she's going to be a bit delayed, but she's one of the first speakers. I'm just trying to check when the speaking time is going to be and hopefully find a plan B if she doesn't make it. It always goes over time. The MEPs have usually been in their member states uh, during the weekend. So even though the staff lives permanently mostly in uh, in Brussels or at least in Belgium, uh, the MEPs have to travel from their member states. The MEP that I'm working for, she has been in her member state and it takes a little while to reach Strasbourg. One of the things that I help her with, uh, what we help her with uh, is for example, travel booking but just as much making sure that she gets speaking time in plenary and also preparing her speaking time of course in accordance with what she wants to talk about but it's me who sort of writes it down and make sure it's printed out for her that she can come directly from her transportation and then directly in the european parliament and then she goes probably directly to the plenary room where she has to speak can sometimes sound like that we do all the work for them. It is not in fact true. The MEP that I work for, she is incredibly busy and I just send her a draft of the speaking notes, but it's not that I just write the speaking uh, notes for her and just say, this is what you have to say because she doesn't have time to, to write it herself. Sometimes difficult to get in touch uh, with her because she's traveling or she's in different meetings. So she has very few days off. If I look back, I can't see any weekend where she has not worked 
I can't, I, I cannot see it. Like I got a question in the comments in one of my videos, do you want to be an MEP yourself? And I'm like, absolutely not. Have you seen an MEP calendar? It's like horrible. If you're an MEP, you give up your whole life for it. I don't know where all these meetings come from and they're all super relevant meetings. So it's not, it's not like that, but it's so difficult to find space in her calendar. If you think that it's in any way glamorous to travel to Strasbourg with the European Parliament, I can confirm it to you today it's not. I booked my hotel room on my trip very late, so I basically got the last hotel uh, left. Nevertheless, I still believe that this represents very much how hotel rooms look in Strasbourg. So let me just give you a tour. So I've basically booked a hotel room for like four people. So the first thing I saw was like this bed and I was like, okay, this is like a, a sofa made into a bed. And I was like, it's, is this really what I'm sleeping on tonight? Is this really what I booked? But then I realized, no, I booked. <laughs> I booked a hotel room for four people because then I looked, oh, you can't see it completely because I put my bag there. But then, then I saw these four cups and I was like, oh yeah. And then I moved to here and then I see like the proper bed. Look at all this closet space I'm never gonna use. And then like this little kitchen here. Wow. That's it, that is my glamorous EP life. I even got a TV and I promise you the only thing that's on there are French like talk shows. Literally the French, I feel that they're obsessed with these talk shows. It's the only thing that's on TV. I don't want to watch it. You can hear like the station very close by. It's not really the best hotel room, I know. Oh my God, look at this. What the hell has happened here? Is that? <laughs> I also found these quite questionable stains on my bed but maybe I then just sleep on the sofa, but then I'm really close to the brown spot on the wall. What do I do? <laughs> maybe if I just move the bedding from the bedroom to here and switch it, but now I see stains on here as well on the sofa, so I might as well give up. reason I wasn't allowed to film in the plenary room but I can tell you that the directive that I have been working on for months and months was voted with a massive majority so I'm super excited the MEPs are still voting in the plenary room while they're voting I am going to have some lunch If you think that basically this video is just about me sitting by my desk and working, I can confirm that this is the truth. You probably clicked on this video to get a realistic view as to what it means to go to Strasbourg and this is it. I am not leaving my seat unless I have occasionally to go to a meeting, although a lot of the things are digitalized at the moment. Tomorrow is a little bit better. This is what we do. It's all we do. I've just gotten home. I was out having a glass of Cremant uh, together with some of the colleagues that I have been working on a directive with. I didn't film it because it was like a small group of people, but uh, I have a picture of it <laughs> where we were all standing together and having something to drink and just 
celebrate. I now I got back to the hotel room. It's now 10.30 in the evening. I just found out that the toilet is leaking. Now starts a very interesting exercise of trying not to use the toilet so much. Ugh. I had such a long day, so now I'm just gonna go to bed and I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> So it's uh, seven o'clock. I have had negotiations all day today and now is my opportunity to see a little bit of the city. But it's going to be nice to go out to a restaurant, have some beer, have some wine, then have a little bit of fun. Usually we go out to eat because otherwise it's just another cafeteria dinner and we're just fed up by this point. Some EU workers take this as an opportunity to party super hard. Sometimes I don't even have the time to go out to eat, so at least I have the time today. But it's very often that I actually have to work so much that I don't have the time to go into the city. So I basically live my life in this European parliament that looks like a spaceship kind of building. <music> <laughs> oh, I don't feel good. I was like, no, I'm not gonna spend too much time outside. And then, well, my body is punishing me in every way possible and I have negotiations in a couple hours. Plus a voting list that has to finish. At least I can check out from my pretty shitty hotel room and not look at the questionable brown stains anymore. I'm gonna take a bus to the European Parliament instead of walking because I have my little trolley with me because today is the day that we go home. Just cleaned up everything and now I'm ready to go. <laughs> It is Friday now and I am back from Strasbourg. I'm just working from home today. I usually do that after a Strasbourg week. I unfortunately didn't make it back for my online French course. So on the way back there were technical problems with the train that I was on. Plus there was a national strike as well. So I got home super late and at that time the French course was already over. So I kind of realized that this video actually becomes quite critical uh, towards this Strasbourg seat that we have in the European Parliament. And I was like, should I make a video about it? And then I thought, well, why not actually? As you can see at my week, I'm basically working all the time. And then on Wednesdays, I go out to eat with my colleagues. This is basically something I can do in Belgium as well. I literally went to a bar where they basically only have Belgian beer. I think a lot of people don't know that the European Parliament in Brussels actually also has a plenary room. So it's not that we do not have the facilities in Brussels to do these plenary weeks. I do perfectly admit that this is super redundant. During Corona, we didn't go to France and we still had plenary weeks and it worked perfectly fine in Brussels. During Corona, France desperately wanted us to go back to Strasbourg. It was even so bad that they argued that it was safer for us to be in France because the infection numbers were higher in Belgium than they were in France. So they thought there would be a much better idea to cram us all hundreds in a little train and then transport us to France because it would be safer for us. Sure, let us bring a bunch of EU workers from Belgium to France where Belgium has like even worse corona numbers than in France. Obviously that didn't work. But now after Corona has gotten much better, we are still obliged to go to Strasbourg because it's written in the treaties. What I'm mostly frustrated though is that it compresses my work day to a much smaller time. All that work starts Monday morning in a train with bad internet connection and sometimes a jump seat. As you see, the only time I really 
have the opportunity to go outside of the European Parliament is on the Wednesday. And trust me, the European Parliament has tried basically a million times to call for one seat. So either to be placed in Brussels or either to be placed in Strasbourg. But unfortunately, it hasn't resulted to anything. It's only France who is blocking that decision. I mean, thank God I don't have children. I mean, can you imagine? It's already quite difficult to balance a work life, family life when you are assistant to an MEP. But imagine having to go one week a month to a different country and leave your children behind. I know that there are some childcare facilities at the European Parliament, but to be honest, I don't know anyone who has used those facilities. So the members of the European Parliament, they usually vote in the afternoon, but my work still continues on. I have deadlines, I have negotiations, I have to prepare amendments, both in committee and on plenary level. I have to read the text and the legislation that they have to vote for in the afternoon and also make sure that I brief them on their content. I don't want this to come off to be like a criticism towards the European Parliament itself because I work there, I'm really happy with my work and I feel that there's a constructive contribution that the European Parliament makes. But every time I have to go on the Monday, I get really frustrated that I have to leave my apartment, leave my partner, leave my cats behind to go to a different city in a pretty bad hotel room and do the exact work there as I could do in Brussels. This was not supposed to be like a negative video, but I feel like I cannot show you how this Strasbourg week is without mentioning the problematics of it. I hope this gave some insights as to what it is to go to Strasbourg as an EU worker. If you want to see more videos about life as an EU worker or see more videos about how it is to live and work in Brussels, please like this video and subscribe to this channel and I'll see you soon.